Hey everyone, uh, so this is a really quick tutorial on how to play the guitar part to Basket Case by Green Day. Uh, it's a great song, super punk rock, um, and everybody has to learn this one at some point. It's just one of those songs that we all learn. Um, so before we begin, the song is I've tuned my guitar to the original tuning in the original recording, which is a half step down. Okay, so from low to high, we have E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and E flat. The tuners might also say something like D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, uh, F sharp, uh, C sharp, and D sharp again. All right, um, so make sure that you're a half step down before we begin. Um, now this song is all power chords from start to finish. Um, so power chords, if you don't know what that is, um, go take a look at one of those lectures or a quick tutorial on power chords and come right back to this one. Uh, it's a really great example of how just a simple power chord hand shape moved around the neck in different positions can give you all kinds of awesome, amazing songs and help us sort of uh, not worry too much about whether a chord is major or minor, right? So these are all five chords or power chords. Um, they have no major or minor tonality. Um, and that's kind of what gives it that edgy sort of punk rock flavor that we're going for here. So this is definitely something that's done on purpose in a song like this. Okay, so, um, and if we're talking about fret numbers in any of this, um, I'll be talking about where we're going to put our first finger. Because you know anytime you're making a power chord that the other two fingers are always just going to be two frets higher than that. So it's a little easier to sort of conceptualize when we talk about uh, fret numbers and when we talk about where we're putting our first finger. So just remember that moving forward. Okay, so let's start with sort of the main part. It's, it's the part that begins the song right away. Do you have the time? The part, I call that the verse. Uh, you might call that something else, but um, uh, it comes in like three, I think three times in the song. So um, it begins on what we're going to call E. It'll sound like an E flat if you're not in tune with, uh, with me in the recording. Um, but for the rest of us, this will be an E and we'll call it E. So it begins here on the seventh fret of the A string. Okay, so let me break that down for you. We basically go from E to B. Okay, we don't change frets there, we just change strings from a power chord built on the seventh fret of the A string, 799, nine, starting on A. And then we just change strings, we just jump down a string. So we get 799 nine, starting on the E string. That's a B, so E to B. And then we kind of do that same pattern but on the fourth fret. Start on A, fourth fret of the A, 466, uh, six, and then jump down 466. Six. Alright, so that's C sharp and G sharp. Okay, so it begins E, B, C sharp, G sharp, and then you slide up only one fret, you go A, and then back to E, same as the first note of the song, to B. Okay, and that's the verse. You just do that a couple times, I'll give you the verse. E, B, C sharp, G sharp, A, E, B. All right, and now the very last B is two measures where all the rest are um, about one measure give or take eighth note or two. Okay, all right, so the next section is the chorus. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's A, B, and E. What, two times? It's going to feel like it's going to do three, um, but it's a little different on that third time. Okay, so it begins with A. Sometimes I give myself the creeps. And the B down to E. And it starts off like it's going to do another one just like that, but it's a little different when we get to E. A to B, I'm E, D, C sharp. Alright, so think I'm cracking up. Alright, little different chords on that last line. It was E. And then jump down two frets to the fifth fret, okay? Gives us D, D power chord or a D5, and then down a C sharp. So seven, five, four, or E, D, C sharp. And then finish off the chorus with a quick A and B. And then you get to the next section now, which is the uh, interlude. Okay, so real quick, just to wrap up that chorus. A to B. 
Uh, sorry. Uh, so real quick, just to wrap up that chorus. That's the interlude there. Um, e, B, B, C sharp, B, B, E, B, B, C sharp, B, B. Um, kind of an interesting rhythm there. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about counting it out and um, just get a feel for it. It's pretty straightforward. A lot of kind of, if you're doing a back and forth um, up and down strum, a lot of those accents are going to be on the up strum. <laughs> So it's essentially uh, um, the left hand, we're doing E, B, B, and instead of this C sharp, we just move up two frets to get this C sharp. It's still a C sharp, still a power chord, it's C sharp 5, same exact chord. It sounds identical. To right? It's just uh, located in a different place on the fretboard that I think makes it a little easier. You can do one or the other. Um, pretty much anywhere in the song that calls for a C sharp, doesn't matter. Um, but I just think in this particular Part of the song, it's easier to go from the B to the C sharp by just sliding up two frets rather than down three frets and up a string. Okay. Ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. Especially because you're gonna go right back to the B. So B E B B ba -ba, ba -ba, ba -ba. It's kind of a weird rhythm there. It's down, 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 down. Right. So one E and then up, down on that B. And then two ups on the C sharp. Up, up, and then down, up, yeah, down, up on a B. No, I was wrong. That last B is up, down. Okay, so down, that's an E, and then switch chords. Uh, up, down, up, down. Yeah, so on the B, it's always up, down, right? So on the first E, you get down, then switch, and then up, down. And then on the C sharp, two ups. Up, up. Then back to the B, same thing you did on the first B. Up, down. Okay, so down, up, down. Up, 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 down. Down, up, down. Up, 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 down. All right, you can hit that B twice if you want. Up, down, down. As it turns around. Or you could just kind of go for an all downstroke sort of something soon. Alright, it's punk rock, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Don't worry too much about that. It's more about changing to the right chord at the right time. That's much more important there. Okay? Um, so then that leads us to the second verse, which is um, identical on the guitar to the first verse. Um, and then the second chorus, which is identical on the guitar to the first chorus. Uh, and then we do that same little interlude thing again. Bam, 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 bam. Only this time it repeats an extra time. So you get four repeats on the second interlude and only two on the first time. Okay? And instead of on this, so after the second interlude, instead of having another verse, we're followed by the bridge, which is very simple A and B. And then it goes into like a verse that doesn't have any vocals. Um, but it's identical again on the guitar. So the bridge is A and B. A, B, two can B. So I better hold. And then another verse right there. All right, so one more time. A and B. Grasp me to control. So I better hold on. This is the verse. It goes around twice. You get the idea. It goes around twice for sort of like a instrumental verse, right? No vocals there, um, no guitar solo or anything really either. So it's kind of like a second interlude, but it's identical to a verse. So you can just think of the third verse as not having any vocals. Okay, um, and then that leads us to the third chorus, which is identical to the first two. Um, and then after that, we get to the outro. The outro is a bit tricky. Um, sometimes. Uh, when I come back and visit the song after so many uh, months or years even of not playing it, it could be a little hard to remember for some reason um, for me. So hopefully you have better luck at remembering um, some of the quirkiness of this outro part. But it's really not that simple. Once it gets explained, you're like, oh, that's...
kind of easy. I think it's just this last little thing that is easy to forget about because it's kind of tagged on at the end and it can just sort of um, be out of mind once you haven't played it for a while. But uh, it really is pretty simple. Um, it starts with E, just like almost all of these sections start with E. Okay, but then after that we go to C sharp. Okay, and then we jump um, down a fret, up a string to A. E, and then B, okay, and we do that a couple times, um, so coming out of the uh, last chorus, very ending of the song um, just does A, E, B, and then it's going to do that A, E, B again, but it's going to use a slightly different version because we're going to switch the E to a lower octave. Okay, so it starts off just like always at the end of the fourth one, I think it's four, um, it goes A, E, B, and then you hear the high hat on the drum go, that's kind of your key, right? You got three of those. Now this B here that we're ending the song on is identical, even in pitch and everything, to this one. It's just a little easier to get to, I think, from the low E. We're going to switch this high E in the very last time. We're going to be using this high E. Okay, and at the very end, he uses the low E. A, E, and you could go up to B, um, but I think since our hand is already here, this finger's already on B, you just kind of pivot, all right? Pivot and place those ones. It gets a little quicker to get to that B, and they're identical. So um, whether you use that one or you use that one, that's fine. It's really about switching the high E for the low E on that very last little tag. A, E, B, and then A, E, B. Alright, so whole outro. On that song section by section now, there's kind of a lot of parts but they're all relatively simple as far as um, the, the chords themselves they are all power chords um, the rhythms can be a bit tricky sometimes a lot of times um, you want to do these if you're doing these fast sort of eight notes already if you add in the up drums you get some of these cool little um, just for like a quick second or two where you add in some of those 16th notes right <laughs> Right? Not necessary, um, but I think he's doing a little bit of that sort of here and there um, in the original recording. Um, I wouldn't stress too much about getting every single one of those because he probably plays it different every time he does it. That's just whatever ended up on the recording was what he felt like doing in that moment. I'm sure he just kind of wings it. That's the punk rock style. That's guitar life for you. Just get the gist of it, really, most of the time. Um, it's all punk rock, so, you know, lots of downstrokes, those fast. Right, just do what feels natural, right? We're going to come to the rhythm. Just keep it fast, keep it aggressive. Remember to have fun with it. Uh, and once you get the hang of playing each sort of section, I'll work on connecting those together. And then when you think you're ready, uh, meet me in the uh, play along video where I'll play along with the song at full speed in the correct tuning. And we'll work together to uh, get all the transitions from start to finish the whole song together. Okay, thanks. <laughs>